Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, everyone, to today's Earth Energy Forecast Show on this Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. Thank you for joining us today, or if you're listening later in the archives or in the podcast, please click on the follow button so you don't miss a show. Well, before we get started with today's guest that I hope we'll connect with us soon, um, I want to talk about the current energies. As most of you know, There was a 7.1 earthquake near Ridgecrest, California, on Friday that was preceded by a 6.4 earthquake on July 4th. Over 3,000 aftershocks have rocked the area since July 4th. These earthquakes have affected the supervolcano at Yellowstone, lifting the magma one and a half miles. A tsunami warning expired after a 6.9 earthquake hit under the waters near Indonesia on July 8th. On July 3rd, a volcano on the island of Stromboli, Italy, erupted, killing one person and leaving the island covered in ash. There's a heat wave in Alaska, while in Latvia, there's record cold. Europe has been frying in record-breaking heat. Clearly, we are moving through some volatile energy. Mars and Leo, a fire sign, is squaring Uranus, the planet of sudden unexpected change in Taurus, an Earth sign this week, and we are between the two eclipses. So watch for more earthquakes, volcanic activity, and heat waves, along with short tempers. This energy can also be accident prone, so please be careful. If you're sensitive, you're probably feeling this energy, especially if you're in tune with Mother Earth. I've been feeling like something big is about to happen along with several of my friends. We are in accelerated chaotic energy, and for us empaths, it can be overwhelming. Well, we were going to have a guest on today, a contemporary shaman called Eagle Spirit, to talk about her work and how sensitive souls can strive and can thrive in stressful times. I'll get it out. Uh, But my guest has not connected with the show yet, so I'll keep talking and hopefully she can connect with us. Um, If you go to the homepage, excuse me, of my website, joanserio.com, and you go to the bottom, scroll to the bottom of the page, And I have a place where you can download a free file called um, Tools for Managing, Maintaining Balance in These Chaotic Times. It's a gift that I give if you sign up for my newsletter. And in there, there's a whole list of things you can do to help yourself through these times. And we're definitely in the midst of really challenging, chaotic times. And we're also... In Mercury retrograde. It went retrograde on Sunday, and I'm sure whatever's happening now is a Mercury retrograde thing of why my guest has not been able to connect or remember to connect today. So um, there's a lot of miscommunications that are happening. You're going to find a lot of things happening with um, electrical computers, uh, your car. anything that's that's electrical excuse me so anyways um i can talk a little bit about what we can do to maintain our balance in these times and one one thing that i did this morning was to do some earthing 
and to connect with Mother Earth. So I went to the beach and I walked the beach barefoot this morning and I did my own little prayers to the water and my prayers to Mother Earth. And it looks like well, our guest has now arrived. So hang on, I'm going to get her online. And there's many things that we can do, and we're going to find out soon just how uh, we can maintain our balance through these times. Just want to make sure that Eagle Spirit is with us. Are you with us, Eagle Spirit? I am, Joan. I'm so glad to be with you. All right. Well, let me finish your your, uh, introduction because you just came on, so I didn't do that yet. So I just want to introduce, introduce Eagle Spirit to you. Unlike traditional shamans that maintain indigenous traditions in their particular community, as a contemporary shaman, Eagle Spirit's energetic work with the four bodies, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, draws from a variety of traditions and builds from her training and gifts. For her, the intent is to help people realize how wonderful they are and gently support them in returning to their natural state of being in balance with their everyday world. It's about facilitating a reclaiming of one's true self and returning to daily life feeling empowered. As a respected wellness expert, her energy has been called a walking vortex. Eagle Spirit Mm. has been featured on TV, radio, and online media. Creator of the popular Empath 101 and unique healing experiences like Soul Journeys and Spirit Quest Tours, she is sought out for inspiring and energizing talks internationally. You can connect with her on her website through eaglespiritjourneys.com, through Facebook at facebook.com slash feel soul, S-O-U-L, good, Instagram.com eagle spirit slash eagle spirit journeys or you can email her at eagle spirit journeys at gmail.com welcome to the show eagle spirit thank you for joining us today thank you so much for having me it really feels like an important time to be talking about sensitive souls with all these energetic shifts going on Definitely. And I don't know if you heard the beginning of the show, but I did give a little intro as to the energies of late and to all the earthquakes um, that the earth Mm -hmm. has been experiencing and um, where we are astrologically. And we're right in the middle of the two eclipses. So it is pretty intense right now. It is very intense. Um, And empaths more than the average folk are really, really feeling it. Um, with there being several different types of empaths that I talk about in Empath 101, specifically the physical empaths, um, people who are like um, environmental empaths who really connect to Mother Earth, they're having a real time of it right now and are needing to do extra self-care just to manage what's going on. Yes, definitely. I I, I can feel it and... Um, mm. Uh, a friend of mine has really, really been hit hard, and I and I I'm hoping that she's listening today or will listen later in the archives. Oh, that would be lovely, and to, and to reach out, and certainly to any of your listeners who, um, who aren't able to call in today during this hour, they can certainly reach me, and I'm happy to chat with them. Um, I think supporting each other right now is really, really important because as empaths, we know there's no really us and them. We're all connected. It's all one heart. And we're moving through the shifting time together. So if we can support each other, I think that's a good thing. And that's critical right now, definitely. I yeah. don't know how I yeah. would make it with, without some of my friends, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. So what can you tell us then about how we can move through these energies and yet still feel them? Because I feel like being an empath or a sensitive soul, really we can turn it around and make it into such a beautiful gift and not feel like we're um, somehow a victim of it, but yet a victor and, and use it to our advantage. I absolutely agree with you with that, Joan. I've had so many clients come and they feel like they're cursed with being a sensitive soul. And I agree. It's like, it's our biggest gift. It allows us to be of service. And as empaths, 
we're born that way. It's not like taking a Sally the Psychic course or learning a new skill. We've been like this our entire lives. And my experience has been, and perhaps yours as well, is that more and more sensitive souls are being woken up. And I believe it's to help move through this energetic time in the best way for all. And so the self-care is extremely important. And before we go any further, can I share a self-care tip? Oh, definitely. Okay. So the first thing I'd like to share, and I will send a link to you, and I'll also post it on my Facebook, is the clearing prayer. What happens with uh, a lot of sensitive souls, especially in these you know, times, it's like we're so responsible, we're going to process our stuff, and, but we end up trying to process everybody else's stuff. Byron Katie often says, you know, if you're stressed out, check and see whose business you're in. Is it your business, everybody else's business, or God's business? And what happens with empaths is we walk around with this, like, invisible superhero cape on, going, here I come to save the day, you know, like Mighty Mouse. I don't know if you remember that cartoon. Oh, Some I do. Old yeah, I'm old to remember that, that yeah. yes. <laughs> And, and so we try and fix everything. And the reason we're doing that is if we, we, it's an unconscious desire, which often gets empaths stuck in that codependency cycle. We feel like, okay, if we fix everybody else, then we'll be okay. But when we get energetic cues, we have to discern what's ours and what's somebody else's. And for those environmental empaths, you know, where in the earth are we getting uh, our physical sensations from? Because often they come as physical cues. And then do what we need to do and then let go of the rest because we can't take away other people's experiences. So we have to fulfill our path. So the clearing prayer, when you find out you've got an energetic cue, it's not yours. It's not um, coming from anybody or any place that needs your help at this time. Then you want to clear it out of your field so that you don't have to suffer with it. Like you said, you don't have to be a victim. So one of the things I like to share is the clearing prayer, and I'm going to invite our listeners right now, whether they're listening to it live or later uh, in the, from the archives, take a moment and scan the body and notice how you feel, noticing where there's tension, where there's openness, and just make a, a little mental note of that. And then I'm going to say the clearing prayer. And if you're actually clear, carrying things in your field that aren't yours, that you're able to release, the clearing prayer will send it away. It takes less than two minutes to do. Are you ready? All okay, here. here we go. Okay. So you know how you feel now. Here's the clearing prayer and see how you feel after. Dear ones, you are healed. You are forgiven. You are free from fear, free from pain, free from the earth's vibration. You are one with your Christ self, one with Christ consciousness. I ask God and his angels to come now and take any misqualified energy, entities, or thought forms from these bodies, from this space now. For it's not your right place. It's not your right home. In the name of Jesus Christ and in the words of Jesus Christ, shin, shin, shin. Shin, shin, shin. Shin, shin, shin. Go in love and go to the light. You may not enter another living being. You may not return to this earth plane. Shin, shin, shin. Kadoish, 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 adnai sibios. Kadoish, 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 adnai sibios. Kadoish, 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 adnai sibios. That is to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord King of hosts. So be it. So it is. And just take a pause, a breath, and then go back to the physical body now and notice how you're feeling. Can you feel the energy shift? Perhaps you'll experience it as a feeling of lightness, the feeling of clarity or calm. As empaths, we're here at this time to help the earth make this transition and to help the inhabitants of the earth make this energetic transition. But it doesn't mean we need to be everybody's doormat. And so that clearing prayer is a really handy, quick way 
to shift the energy. It's great for non-empaths too. If you find your emotional fields are uh, full, perhaps you've just been cut off in traffic. You've had a difficult day with the kids. The clearing prayer is a quick way to reset your energy. How does that feel to you, Joan? Uh, I, I feel more calm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have got a couple questions. It's interesting. Uh, you use the awesome. word shin. Yes. Um, so that, that there's a lot of lot of um, questions I have about shin. What what language? <laughs> The the shin 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 is Aramaic, and the gadoish okay, gadoish gadoish Adonai Sibiosa is Hebrew, and Hebrew, apparently, yeah, right. yeah. apparently, I'm not a Bible expert in any way, but the story goes that when Christ was clearing the money changers out of the temples, he used shin shin shin. Okay. So just clearing okay. things, uh, allowing the energy to go back to source. Okay. Basically. Because also, I think there's there's shin. If I'm remembering correctly, in Hebrew, um, also, and there was this whole story of, well, no, it could have been Chinese, but but there 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 there's a lot of energy and information around that word, and that's why I was wondering. I had the feeling you were using yeah. the Aramaic. It's interesting because in my book, Hardwired to Heaven, uh, mm-hmm. when I go through the um, I call them the seven steps, you know, highway to heaven, you know, stairway to heaven, uh, as far right. as using the heart's electromagnetic field to create. I do use Aramaic, the Aramaic that Jesus used. <laughs> Elaha yeah. Ephatha means sacred unity be open. And then mm-hmm. I also use the Hebrew version of it. The Kadoish one was, that version of it was more from keys of Enoch, but I use the, the, uh, the true Hebrew of Kadosh, 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 Adonai, Tzavaot, um, yeah. in there too. So I find that very interesting that I use, I use both of those in, in those steps that, to use the heart to create. Language is, language is so darn powerful. And I have clients who go, I know I feel better after the prayer, but sometimes I have trouble remembering it until like the Empath 101 grads, they've used it so much during the period of the month as they're shifting and clearing that they know it by heart. So what one lady decided to do is she just goes straight to the shin, shin, shin. And for her, that's all she needs to do. The power mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. word is, is so wonderful. And I always like to do it in rhythm of three. Yes. 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 That's powerful. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's these, these little tricks and tools that because you and I know, and I'm sure all of your listeners do, everything is energy. So it only makes sense that empaths at this time are feeling the energy, are feeling the shift. And if we work with it, discern what's coming because we need to fulfill our path of service and then clear what's just it's sort of like mm, if you were a radio and a non-empath may listen to one station. An empath, it has a number of stations that they're tuned into. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, mm-hmm. a more of a mm-hmm. multidimensional awareness of things, and we can't ignore it. So we might as well learn how to work with it and thrive. So how do we work with it? How do, how do we practice discernment? You know, the first thing is, is it real or is it Memorex? I'm old enough to remember that commercial. <laughs> no, you are. But, you know, is it me Absolutely, or yep. is it something outside of me? So one of the first things, there are key questions. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share another sort of prep for the questions. There's lots of people, you know, they've got their pensions out and they're checking things, but they forget four questions that will help make their – their um, discernment work far more effectively and that they won't be doubting themselves with the answers that they receive. So whether you're an empath or not, you can use this. The first question is, you want to know how you get your yeses and nos. So if you're using a pendulum, you're using Mm -hmm. the body as a pendulum, you're visualizing. Once you know your yeses and nos, ask these four questions before you check anything. Am I grounded? And you want a yes. Am I connected to the God source? Whatever word you use, whatever you use is the highest power. And you want a yes for that too, because you want to be connected to your divinity. You don't want the same mind that creates problems is not the one you want to go to for the answers. 
The third question is, is there any outside interference? And you want to know. But outside interference, it can look like um, what your partner wants you to do, what your family wants you to do, stressful thoughts that you're holding, um, yourself. That can be interference for you as well. So you want to make sure you're clear. And then the fourth question is, do I have permission to proceed? Checking and discernment is so key to living a more peaceful, powerful, and on your path type life. But if you don't have permission to be checking at the time, that's why that fourth question is there, then really uh-huh. it's what, what, what I call is mental masturbation. Pardon for the bad word, but you're going round and round things and you're not going to get the satisfaction you're looking for. So if you allow yourself to be clear, grounded, connected, and have permission to proceed, then when you're trying to check and discern on something, you can trust the answers you're getting. So once you're clear, okay, and so then you want to look at how you phrase your questions because that's the problem that empaths get into. As you said, we an unskilled empath is going to feel like a victim and as though things are being done to them as opposed to they're tuning into energy and aware of it. And so if you phrase questions like, is it in the highest good I, and if you add a little line there, that would be your action, and then have another little line, that's your date stamp. Or if you wanted to know if you're feeling something, is it mine? Once you've got your yeses and nos, you can go ahead and check into things. But until you have clarity and know that you're asking questions in the best way, you're going to find your answers are kind of fuzzy. And you may get pulled about by your emotional energetic field or um, the needs and desires of others. And what empaths really need to do to help live a more soulsational life is understand that the highest good of all includes them. We're not at the bottom of the list of our priorities if we're going to fulfill our divine path. That's really important. I think you should repeat mm. that one. <laughs> well, well, I think it's, it's we're not at the bottom of, our, of the priority list. We are here with a purpose. And as I said earlier, more and more sensitive souls are being woken up because we're needed. We know before others do, much like a canary in a coal mine, when things are off. And that may be if we're a physical empath, we're feeling things um, shifting with the earth. It may be as an emotional empath, we know that there's um, things going on with friends or loved ones or we're listening to the tone of someone's voices. I'm sure your regular listeners love listening to you so much because they can hear your confidence. They can hear your integrity. They can feel it. Well, that's them listening on an emotional level, tuning into you, really, more than just tuning into your your show. And for the mental empaths, um, they're noticing particular themes and reoccurring patterns, and they're noticing them. And the ones that have held society's systems in place are breaking down because they no longer resonate as the vibration is raising. Yes, yes, um, we're definitely in that. Um, yeah, and yeah, and and astrologically, uh, we know that because Saturn and Pluto are in Capricorn right now, and their conjunction is going to perfect in January, and that's all about breaking down these systems that we all know aren't working. Uh, you don't have to be empathic or, or psychic exactly. to know that now. It's pretty apparent. <laughs> And then, and then the helpful thing is with practicing discernment, we, we like patterns. I mean, this is how society is constructed, right? If everyone believes along the same lines, then patterns and structures stay in place. Now that we know that that's shifting, how do we know how to proceed? By practicing discernment, you know what your next step is. And by including the phrase, is it in the highest good eye, whatever action it is that you're feeling pulled to take, you can trust it, and you know that the highest good includes all. So, right. you know, right. maybe you used to work at a particular job, but your soul's pulling you elsewhere. Practice discernment. Know when the time to take that step and create that change 
feels in alignment with your soul's path. When you're in alignment, even if you're scared, you know you have faith that you can move forward. And when you take that first step, the next step is revealed, and then the next step is revealed. I'm sure you've spoken to other shamans or contemporary shamans like myself who say, you know, you don't choose this path, it chooses you. And so if you're practicing discernment, even when your life totally changes, like what mine did, when your life totally changes, you can have faith and you can trust. And as you're doing that, instead of being held in fear, of what will my family think? What will my employer think? You know, you can have faith that they will feel that shift with you. And the most amazing thing happens for people who are honoring with integrity, the alignment of their soul, we're really raising the vibration of everyone. And so that self-care and that checking in and practicing discernment blesses us everyone. Empaths exactly. get that more than others because they know we're connected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do we combat you talked about being in alignment and I agree Mm. I mean it just sounds like Mm. all these things are popping up from books that I've written (laughs) as you're speaking today it's interesting uh so I wrote about a chapter about um alignment in in hardwired heaven too so for you how do we come into alignment and I know that the sensitive people and empaths out there probably well feel when they're in alignment, but how do we come back into alignment into our lives? I think it's important. Often spiritual people um, get a little airy fairy. They forget that they have a physical body and they need to be grounded. So the very first thing I feel that we need to do to be in alignment is to be present. So think about things like breathing, earthing, um, energetic work, Anything that's going to get you back into the moment. And in the Empath 101, I have like 10 favorite tips and tools. And I have to tell you, I, I add as a joke, but I, but I think it's quite serious. Number nine and 10. Number nine is stop trying to be so spiritual. You don't have to wear certain clothes, do certain mantras, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, go to yeah. certain places to be spiritual. You already are a spiritual being having a physical experience. And number 10 that I tell everyone to avoid is don't learn through pain. Pain will get us back in in our body. For me, I've had cancer and heart disease and car Mm -hmm. accidents. It's certainly a way that will snap you back, but you Mm -hmm. can do it much Mm -hmm. more gently. And more and more people are aware of how important it is to stay connected here on the earth. Now, one thing I would suggest for empaths is to be mindful of what happens when their auric fields are holy. And I don't mean like, oh, I mean, (laughs) they've got holes in them. And Uh and that happens with alcohol, drugs, um, over Facebooking, um, overworking, over sexing, anything they're doing to disconnect. When we disconnect as empaths, what we're doing is leaving our fields open. I don't want to say vulnerable because we don't want to feed into the victim consciousness, but we're leaving them very, very porous and we're not present. And because everything is energy, lower vibrations will be very happy to come and visit. Yes, and to fill that, those holes. And that feeds, <laughs> that's right. And that feeds the fear, right? And if, and if yes. we can be frightened, lower vibrations, it's like giving them candy. So when we're present, it's not possible for lower vibrations to filter into our fields and reside in our bodies, creating ill health. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really important to be grounded. Um, before you came on, I, I said that the one thing that I did for myself this morning was to go walk the beach barefoot to, to do the grounding and said prayers and all <laughs> that, that, that was my ritual this morning to make sure that I was grounded because I could feel myself just starting to float away today. And I'm like, Oh no, you can't do that today. <laughs> you have a show today and, and or any day, you know, I, especially with this acceleration of energies right now, it's so easy to just get taken up and forget 
that you are in a physical body. And they're waiting to vibrate up to a better place. Our better place and our better time is here and now. We're here with purpose. And so it's very, very important to be present. So getting into the body is is the first step into getting into alignment. And then you move up into an energetic body, up to the emotional body, start to deal with the emotions that are there. And one thing that that, uh, Empath 101 grads find so helpful along the way is recognizing that whatever's coming into the physical field or emotional field or mental field, field or spiritual field it's coming as an energetic cue it's not there to harm us it's just trying to get our attention so if we want to be in alignment we need to look at the information that's there for us rather than ignoring it rather than leaving our body and just continuing to gather energy that doesn't resonate with us on a soul level make sense yeah, it makes sense. Uh, we lost you for a moment, but I think we got most of the yes. important information. <laughs> it's Mercury retrograde. That's all. <laughs> I know. Every, everything is a little weird. We've had weird time. We've had weird technology. But the lovely thing is we know from our conversation already there are so many um, synchronicities or alignment with the message that both you and I are sharing. This is an important time, and as sensitive, it really is a blessing to be here, and the self-care is very, very important. Yes, I've been wanting to do a show for empaths. I think it's really important right now because as the energies continue to build, we're really going to need these techniques Absolutely. In order to, in order to thrive, like you say, in these stressful times. Yes. I absolutely agree. And that way we don't get caught up in the stress and anxiety that is being manufactured. Because mm-hmm. you see, if a, pop- a population is in fear, they're controllable. Yes, yes. yes. And as sensitive souls, it, this, we need to discern when we feel that energetic cue of fear, check and see whose it is and what we need to do about it. The interesting thing is fear is an emotion. So we may have an emotional energetic cue, but where is it really coming from? If it's ours, it still could be coming from the other three energetic levels, the physical, the mental, or the spiritual. So fear can come up on a spiritual level when we're disconnected from source. Or if we're holding a particular, from the mental energetic level, a particular thought pattern. And it may be some of that old conditioning and so if we're willing to explore things then we're back in our power we're we're not at the whim of anybody else we're actually contributing to raising the consciousness on this planet yes and and being in our power is very important right now i i think that Part of what's happening with the energies is it's really raising us to the level of mastery that we will need to move through what's coming. And that's part of that is self-empowerment. Yes. Yeah. And so if we can welcome it rather than shrivel under it, we're standing in our power. If we explore Mm -hmm. it, Mm -hmm. if we engage with it and and allow ourselves to have healthier boundaries, which is something an empath is not often good at until they become an empowered empath. Um, If our yeses are real yeses and our noes are real noes, then we can stand in alignment and in integrity with our soul as opposed to continuing to go on with the social programming that we've been trained into. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about boundaries because that's really important. I mean, it's important for all of us, but especially for empaths. Yeah. And for me, that's why the checking and discernment is so darn important. So if, for example, um, someone wants to meet with you because they want you to do an errand for them, even that checking in and going, okay, is it in the highest good that I do this errand for so-and-so at such and such a time? If you get a no, then say no. 
if you look at things from a soul perspective, it's not you're trying to be unkind to someone and unhelpful because Lord knows as an empath, we want to be so helpful to everybody. But we may be avoiding a car accident. We may be um, empowering someone instead of taking their power by doing everything for them. We need to show up and shine where we're guided to be rather than think that we have to do everything for everyone. This path of service that we're born to as a coming in as empaths is important, but we have to, to understand what's a path of service and what's jumping on the codependency bandwagon. So that's why those boundaries are so darn important and why discernment can be so helpful. Yes. So you talk about path of service and it sounded like you were talking about a path of service and as a collective for empaths. So there's so yes. many of us now, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't remember my pa- all my past lives, so, but I know that right now at this time, there's, there's so many of us. So what is that path? Do you think, what is our collective service now that we came to? The most important thing is that we be our true self. We be in alignment. So it comes right back to what we were talking about a bit earlier. Um, for some people, their path of service, yes, they're going to be a healer or they're going to be a medium or they're going to be a teacher. Or You can do it actually in any um, career path, but the path of service is to be there and be in integrity so that when I stand across from you, Joan, if we were in the same room, we could look into each other's eyes and I know that you are speaking your truth that your yeses are yeses, your noes are no. And if we get guided to go somewhere and speak, we're going to have the courage to do it. Or if we're going to um, be guided to, well, for example, I'm, I'm sitting here in my living room right now, and that looks into my studio. In March, I started painting. I've never painted in my life. And now I'm doing soul signature portraits and um, special art pieces that will help energetically activate people. Well, I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have known that. So part of my path of service has expanded past doing one-on-one sessions or teaching classes or doing soul journeys or spirit questers. Suddenly I'm doing these art pieces so that the energy can be welcomed into an office or a home. It's only coming because of the discernment. And as each empath, and truly as each individual, if we are living in alignment with our beliefs, and that's why it's important to be checking on those regularly, it's like, is that true for me? We shift and change over time. And what we believed as children Mm -hmm. or as teenagers or as young adults may not be what we believe to be so. And that's why you're seeing these organizations begin to crumble because it's not the collective good of the one percent it's the collective good the highest good of all and empaths are here to point out when that's not working and it, it can be even when we're not empowered empaths you may find there's people who particular buildings make them ill or particular types of work that they can no longer do I, was, uh, I travel a lot for my work, and I remember coming through Customs in Toronto, and I was at U.S. Customs, and I chatted with the most lovely Border Patrol guard um, who proceeded to tell me about a, a dream he'd had and a vision of Jesus, and he was holding my hand during this time. Now, that's not the normal experience of crossing <laughs> no. the border. <laughs> but he needed to start to talk about his sensitivities that weren't being nurtured in the job that he was doing and proceeded mm-hmm. to tell me that he mm-hmm. wanted to write a book. And as empaths, oh my goodness, you must have found this too. It doesn't matter where we are. So it can be crossing border yeah. control. It can, it can be at the <laughs> yeah. coffee shop or in an airplane. And we have this invisible on our foreheads. Please tell me your life story. Mm-hmm. Empaths mm-hmm. see each other. We, we are able to witness other people. And sometimes it's not about waving your hands about or delivering some beautiful message. It's simply about listening and showing up. Yes. yes. The, key, 
he, being he that is, compassionate witness. Yes. Exactly. Now, the thing is, we need to learn to do it for ourselves first before we run about and try and do it for others. Because what happens um, is if we're not an empowered empath, we're trying to help others and be compassionate. And underneath it, we're doing energetic hooks. We're, I'll just be kind enough to you and then you'll do this to me and I'll give you all the advice you need and then you'll really appreciate me. Wait, you're not taking my advice. And then we start to get upset and then we start to get worried and then we don't feel good. And then we go back around that cycle again of codependency and start to feel bad for everyone. And one of the things I like to share with empaths, especially environmental environmental empaths who are extremely upset about these earth shifts going on, is to understand that we feel them for a purpose and we're here to do our part, but we can't do everyone's part. And frankly, I think the earth is going to be fine when it gets rid of the heavy burdens of things that aren't in alignment and in integrity. What do you think about that? Well, it's part of the show. This is what we're this is why why I started the show actually because we're going through these large cycles right now. And mm. uh we are in the shift of ages and I believe that we are coming to the end of an age and that may yeah. mean that the earth definitely um like an animal that comes out of water it kind of shakes off <laughs> shakes everything off it feels like that's what she's doing and um i don't know what will happen this time as far as mm. uh the beings on the planet and how we how we weather this this change but I do believe in the cycles and in this change, and we're seeing it. I mean, we can't deny that things are definitely different than they were when we were growing up. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why we come back to integrity. So instead of thinking that we're saving Mother Earth, I think it's that we're working with her and we're part of this process. And we're here with purpose. And what helps release the fear, I find it's most helpful, is Stepping back and looking at things from a soul perspective rather mm-hmm, than, mm-hmm. than getting caught up. And often as empaths, you know, my goodness, sometimes even watching a TV commercial can put us to tears because we get so yes. caught up in things. But yes, if we understand yes. there's, there's purpose with it and that all we need to do is our part, then we fulfilled this lifetime's path. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's that's why that checking in is so darn important. Yes, uh, a friend of mine's wife um, is so upset over the current U.S. administration uh, mm-hmm. that you know regularly she's in an emotional turmoil. And I said, well, you know, I just look at it as I, I see the higher perspective. I go, she has to go, to, you know, like you're saying, the soul's perspective, the higher perspective. I'm like, well, he's just doing his job. You know, it's time for us to change and we needed to wake up and he's waking up a lot of people. And, you know, and I just watch and see it from that perspective and I don't get caught up in the the energy that's floating around. And like you said, it just instills more fear into people and that's just not the place to hang out. No, because you're not going to be empowered in that place. No, we want to be called. We want to be called to action to that path of service that I continue to come back to. Um, and so getting out of that fear place, you know, if you go think of A Course in Miracles, there's only two things, fear and love. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. even when things are challenging before us, if we can come from our hearts, if we can come from that soul perspective, and that's why when I mentioned about the four, the protocol of four questions before you're checking, you know, you want to be coming from your divinity, not from your human fear. And so yeah. walking through through these changing times from that place allows us to make some new choices that may feel difficult at first because they're new. They're new patterns that we're learning. And we're unlearning old limiting beliefs and fears that no longer serve us in our growth and our growth as a whole for humanity. And in Eagle Spirit, it feels like this time is calling many of us to do different work, that our work is changing, that our path of service is is broadening or changing now. And how, 
can we tune into that? Um, and how do we know what that is at this time? Well, again, it comes back to the sermon, doesn't it? If we recognize that everything is shifting and changing, why would our path stay rigid? It's the very mm-hmm. thing that those of us on a spiritual journey have been railing against as we were willing to say, yes, I am intuitive, or yes, I am an empath, or yes, I, I feel that this is an important issue. As we continue to grow and change, our way of serving is going to change. So my example earlier about all of a sudden I'm doing artwork as well, which I didn't consider myself an artist. Um, and what pops in my mind, I'm just listening because I keep hearing it repeatedly, um, is I want to come back and take you back to Sedona in 1998 uh, on the journey of the heart. Uh, a colleague of mine who was a, a student of mine at the time, Kathy Carr, she and I left on a six month journey across North America. And uh, we let go of everything that we owned. Um, she bought a truck. For me, I had a suitcase, a box of photos, a candle and an aloe vera plant that I smuggled across the border as we headed into the (laughs) States and we were to to show up to help light other people's lights so Uh that they could continue to do their path because at that time people were changing and shifting. And Mm -hmm, one of our guides mm -hmm. at at the time was a Hopi elder and he had said to us that there would be a time in the future where there would be great fear, great environmental difficulties and um, political oppressed and our job was to be peace I believe we're in that time now. yes and I every, agree. everything that we've done has led us to now and as mm-hmm. we continue to do these shifts and changes we will be called on and we will be asked to do more and that's not a burden it's a blessing because the more is going to allow us to be more fully ourselves. We've only been a very small part of ourselves, you know, from a soul perspective, because we've been locked into these limiting beliefs. And if I come back to 98, because it's my feeling with your permission, I'd like to do a chant. And it, it came oh, from Schnebly. Okay. It came from Schnebly Hill. It's uh-huh. on my first, that is. <laughs> first. Okay. So it's a very powerful spot. In 1998, there I was on Schnebly Hill, and this chant started playing, recurring over and over in my head. And it turned out it was called Eagle Spirit Song. And I I kept it in my heart for quite some time. It's it's such an honor to know your song. And then I got Mm -hmm. a little off track, perhaps, and I lost my song. And it didn't come back till 2010 when I was taking a group to Ireland to uh, teach them about accessing and processing past lives. And lo and behold, my song came back. And over time, I came to realize that the song, the chant, is actually an activation for everyone to fulfill their path. That was what it was doing for me in 98 and what it continues to do for others when they hear it. And so it feels important, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move my... Um, voice a little bit away from from the microphone so that I'm not too loud for y'all but um, I'm going to do this chant now it only takes a minute but it'll help shift the energy and be an energetic answer to your question about how we continue to shift in our purpose and our path of service does that sound good that sounds wonderful okay so I'll just take a moment here And yell at me if I'm too loud. I'm going to move the speaker away just a little bit here. Hey, 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 hey,
There's an energetic shift that happens when we're in alignment, in integrity energetically, and we're having the courage to fulfill our soul's path. So Eagle Spirit Song is a chant that helps line things up energetically. It's on my Journey of the Heart CD, which is on iTunes or can be found on my website. Um, And often I do that when I'm teaching meditation or speaking in front of a group, because all of a sudden the energy just goes zing, zing, zing. People are back lined up. It goes straight to the heart. And sometimes words go to the head and then to the heart. Mm -hmm, So thank mm -hmm, you for mm -hmm. for allowing me to do that. Oh, definitely. I I also do intuitive sound, um, so I, I, I appreciate it. Thanks, Joan. So you talked about codependency, Mm. and I think that's a big thing for a lot of empaths, and um, now certainly is the time to recognize it and to move through that. (laughs) Uh, And and what you're saying is to claim your independence and your sovereignty and your self-empowerment. So do you have any words of wisdom for us, empaths, about releasing that codependency? Well, those energetic hooks that codependency is is part of, it, it makes us dependent, and it makes others dependent on us. And what comes to mind to share with you is a story about my father who passed away We're just coming up to the anniversary now. He passed away July 18th, 2012. And it was his third time with cancer. And I remember the first time with cancer, about 18 years prior to that, I had seen the cancer in his stomach and couldn't say anything using checking and discernment till about three months on. And when I, it was finally time, I had permission. It was in the highest good of all that I tell him what I saw I was able to help him heal the cancer. We used um, Hannah Kroger's work uh, using herbal and homeopathic medicine. And he lived for many years cancer-free. The second time he had cancer, he decided to go uh, more of a Western allopathic medicine. And um, again, cleared the cancer. And at the time, I didn't know until on his deathbed that he had made a deal with God, please let me live for 11 more years and he did and to the date this time he manifested lung cancer Mm. and this time again using the checking and discernment I did not have permission to remove it it was his Mm -hmm. exit Mm -hmm. strategy had I been codependent with my father who I loved dearly I would have taken it from him But what he would have had to do is to create something far more serious and even more painful than lung cancer so that he could leave. And so when we love someone, we honor their past. Codependency is not love. And holding on to these energetic hooks that are have been engaged in in either this lifetime or perhaps across lifetimes when we can dissolve those freeing others and freeing ourselves then we we move together we move forward we raise the vibration of ourselves and of the consciousness on the planet it makes me think that perhaps sharing the forgiveness prayer would be helpful do you think that would be handy oh definitely Okay, this is a really simple forgiveness prayer. It comes from Catherine Ponder, who was a Unity Church minister. She's passed away now. She did a lot about prosperity and abundance. 
And one of the things that she felt was important is if you're going to be abundant, which means abundant well-being, not just financially, but in relationship and right livelihood and such, then you need to let go of all the old hurts and things you've been holding on to. And what I like about her simple prayer is it has three easy steps. And it's the last one that most um, often gets missed in regular forgiveness work. And as, as you're undoing those codependent energetic hooks, the third one is going to be the most important step. So I would invite your listeners to think of a person or situation that they know they've got some energetic hooks with and that they're willing to release. So that when I go, la la, fill that person's name in for the la la bit. Okay, so has everyone got a person or a situation? I feel the listeners got it. Okay, so here comes step one. You want to forgive the other person. Step two is you allow them to forgive you. And step three is, and this is the really key one, you forgive yourself. You undo the energetic hooks that keep you in that codependency cycle. So think of that person or situation. And I'm going to say this slowly so that people can repeat this in their own mind or out loud at home. Because we know the vibration of sound makes things even more powerful. The prayer goes like this. So la la, put that name of that person or situation. I freely and fully forgive you. I loose you and let you go to your good. Quickly and in peace. All is cleared up between us. Now and forevermore. Step two, you let them forgive you. La la, you freely and fully forgive me. You loose me and let me go to my good. Quickly and in peace. All is cleared up between us now and forevermore. And our third and final step. I freely and fully forgive myself. I loose myself and let me go to my good. Quickly and in peace. All is balanced within me. Now and forevermore. Three easy steps. You forgive them. You allow them to forgive you. And you forgive yourself. When you know better, you do better. As empaths, we've done the codependency and we can do better. It's a, it's a day at a time. And allowing ourselves the care and compassion that we offer others will help us live definitely a sensational life. Oh, that was beautiful. What a, Thank what a you great so much. way. Yeah, what a great way to bring the show to a close. Yeah. Is I'm there so anything glad we else? had time together. <laughs> Yes, I think we need more time to gather Eagle Spirit. <laughs> I would I would love that. Um, is there anything else you want to share with us today? I'm just listening in when you ask that question. Just give me one second just to make sure. Of course. I I think that that we've shared what we need to. I agree. It's like we've walked through a doorway together with your listeners. There's more for us to discover. And I'm imagining that after they listen to this show, either now live or later in the archive, that they're going to have questions. And I would really invite them to message me through your show or through me to me directly. You've got all my contact information there up on the page. I'd love to chat more about this. And I'm just really encouraging everyone to be gentle with themselves and have the courage to move forward because while it's chaotic externally, it doesn't have to be internally and we can carry that peace in the world as we live our, our path. Yes, absolutely. Beautifully said. 
And by the way, Eagle Spirit, I make a YouTube video of each show, so I will send you the link. And if you'd like to put it on your website, you can, but it also goes out that way. So, um, you know, people can find me on, on find this show on YouTube as well. So awesome. thank you so I, much. I, thank you for having me. It's been a pure pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for listening today. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a show next week. I might. It will be on the second eclipse. So we'll see what I feel like or, or who might pop up then. But the following week, that Tuesday, July 23rd, I will have Mayan calendar expert Carl Kellerman on to talk about our current place in the multidimensional Mayan calendar, a show definitely not to be missed. I've been studying his work for years, and I am so excited to have him on the show. And then to end the month, on July 30th, I will have Tom Palladino from Scalar Light Programs here to talk about ways that he's taken from Tesla technology using scalar technology that I talk about also in my book, but using scalar technology for healing. That show should be really, really uh, informative. So thank you again, everyone, for listening. Please be gentle with yourselves. And, you know, you're the first person to forgive. You're the first person to love. And you're here for a reason at this really pivotal time in history. So thank you again for listening. Much love to everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.